Aloha and welcome to A Word with Ward. I'm Representative Gene Ward and I host this at the State Capitol once a month, A Word with Ward. And today we have a special guest, former Governor John Waihe. Governor, thank you, thank you for coming back. Governor and Chairman of the Native Hawaiian Roll Commission. Roll Commission. In yes. fact, we're going to talk a lot about that. <laughs> All right. But I thought as I was contemplating this historic meeting, and by the way, thank you for the beer summit that uh, you came out to Hawaii Kai for at the Kona Brewery. You spoke literally two hours, all the information anybody ever wanted to know about Hawaiian sovereignty. So thank you for that. In two hours. Yeah. <laughs> which, I is, mean, which is a lot more time than we normally have. Um, it's true. Portion, especially you know. right for that focus. And especially for such a critical issue. Here we have only a half hour. We've got a lot to cover. But I thought for those who, those who know you as the governor, they can go back to maybe when you were lieutenant governor, then they can say, well, you were a rising star in the House of Representatives. What did John Waihei do before that? And then back to his childhood to where, did you know you were going to be governor someday? <laughs> uh, no. Did, did I you didn't. go up I in didn't. I didn't. But I was part of a... Uh, of a group in the 1970s, you know, we're part of the Hawaiian Renaissance, okay. that actually um, got together with uh, some very notable people, uh, uh, like uh, Pinky Thompson, remember? Yes, of course. Alvin Shim and other na n uh, Native Hawaiians, and they organized this group, and I was sort of the token young person they on there. They pulled you in? No, yeah, to talk about the possibility of someday electing a a governor of Hawaiian ancestry. This was before the Concon, right? Oh, yeah, this was before. Well, like, what year was that? Oh, it's probably around 73, 74. 70. I was just when I was going into law school, that, which is what I did before I became, uh, before I went into the Concon and before the state legislature. What were you doing before you went into law school? I actually was working in high community school. education. Well, my high school. I bounced around for high school. My, ma my, my home high school was uh, Honoka'a on mm. the Big Island, mm -hmm. and then I also went, I graduated really from Hawaiian Mission Academy. Is that right? Uh, yes, I came down to the big city and took a chance, my parents took a chance, you know. I'd did you have politi right. did you hold a political office or a, a no, class officer enough, in um, any of those schools? No, because there was always sort of a, a uh, character qualification. <laughs> I was what do you trouble. mean by that? <laughs> I was oh, yeah, all the these schools, you know, this is the by day. The content this of is their when we were you young, that. you know. It's not like, it, it, and so mm -hmm. if you wanted to be an officer, you wanted to be a, st a student body, whatever, you needed to be sure that you were a student in good standing. Oh. And I, I often had Is this something new that people are going to be <laughs> here? <laughs> well, they ought to do that today, you know. No, no, no. So I was in for trouble. Office now, right? No, it was a terrible trouble all the entire time. But, you know, strangely enough, when I left Hawaii to go to college, I remember telling my dad, now I'm going to make him proud of me, I would be student body president. You know, when you go to college? When I went to college. And as a matter of fact, uh, I, I became student body president, which was uh, sort of an interesting thing because this was in Michigan, so we were up mm. there. And, uh, you know, one day I said, uh, you know, I really didn't like the way the student body was being run and da 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 da, -da and I had not kept my, my work to my father, so I, we went out and we organized. And we organized, uh, really, starting with the disenfranchised, you know, because usually student body government is a kind of a clique. Which campus was that? This was Andrews University in Bering Springs, Michigan. How, what was the student body number? Oh, it wasn't that big. It was about 3,000. 3,000, okay. So manageable to... Yeah, but we got the, you know, we got the, we got the first native, all the kids from Hawaii, you know, and then the foreign students, and then the jocks. You know, oh, and then okay. the fraternity, every, every, uh, you know, and uh, got them excited and I got elected. And that was my first, uh, first political office. Did you ever organize before? Not, not, not re well, you know, I always was sort of organizing, uh, I, you know, and doing something. Ca you know, anyway, I did that and then I ended up doing, going into community organizing. And, and I was in, uh, responsible in, for Benton Harbor, Michigan, 1967 for those people who are interested was the mm. year when the worst racial riots occurred in this country. You had the great burning of Detroit and number three Watts riot. Was wa well, Watts came a little, little bit little later. But, um, uh, you know, in 19, uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan was the third worst riot in the country. And I found myself there on the first mm. night, on mm. the first night of work as a community organizer 
place was having this riot that was going on. Streets were burning and everything, and my boss tells me, you know, um, you need to get out there and uh, calm things down. <laughs> Your boss that was first night. My first, my first boss, because uh, I just got hired as, uh, in this community education program. Oh, okay. Uh, so he says, go out. Yeah, and I, I'm thinking to myself, what, a, what okay. is a Native Hawaiian doing here? <laughs> you know, I, what am I signing Plus up for this stuff for? Okay, what you did know? you do? Well, I, I went out there and prayed that uh, you know nothing bad ever happened to me, <laughs> and just talked to the people. I, you know, talked to people and did stuff, but. It, it, it told me something. It told me that, you know, I, I felt that I really ought to be doing this at home. So, mm. you know, anyway, we, um, I did that for a number of years. And I was in charge of, with the community organizing and with the, uh, on the political. Uh, I did political uh, organizing. And so, yeah, so I knew people so like Jesse Jackson and the rest oh, of these guys okay. who were coming up. And um, we organized the town, won some elections, and... Uh, I was starting to got a really good job offer from Whirlpool and talked to my wife and said, you know, I think we want to go home. So we came home and we came home smack right at the beginning of the um, Hawaiian uh, the Renaissance. Renaissance mm -hmm. and the not not, not and it, for music and. So uh, my partner, right. George Ganahili, was obviously one of your... Uh, well, George colleagues. actually was one of the people that was involved with Alvin Shim and, and Pinky and the rest of them who were talking about Hawaiian governor back then. Mm -hmm. know, how do we get elected? How mm -hmm. do you do it? Bob, and he was very much uh, a peer of, the, of those people, of that, of that group. Uh, I was much younger. I was, you know, like running around and doing... Uh, doing protest things and but how long did you stay in michigan that was i lived in michigan from 1964 till about 1971. so, okay, so you got a good mainland mindset that oh i i was there because yeah. i went to school there and also mm. got those i got a uh, planning uh, masters in planning you know that you know governor i usually talk with young people and ask them about what's their ambition, their goals, what's deep inside of them, what some of the, uh, maybe the kernels of who they're going to be. Did you ever imagine that in those days or prior to that, on the Big Island, you, you well, were going to be I governor? Had a, I, I had a passion for trying to make things better, you know, like uh, uh, a passion for doing something in the community. Or I, I was always involved with something like that, even when I was getting into trouble in school. It was mostly because I, I kept challenging what people considered to be conventional wisdom. But I never saw myself as actually taking um, the front, you know, the front... Um, the uh, leadership? Or yeah, I, well, I was always in backdoor leadership. I enjoyed <laughs> I thought I thought that I would be... We're in the state capital and he yeah, gets it back door being governor. Governor. You're in the front you know, it, Unfortunately, <laughs> over the years, it's gotten a bad name, especially in this place. But in those days, it was like pushing other people in front, like even the CONCON. When the Constitutional oh. Convention came about, I didn't think I was going to run. I didn't plan to run at all. But I was managing about five different campaigns for people who were right for others to so get I, I used mm. to always say you know I didn't want to be in political uh, office I just wanted to have a lot of friends there you know that kind of a thing and then all of a sudden the, the, the people that I was the, my boss Alvin Shim called me in one day and, and it happened to be the deadline day and he said look mm. why don't you run this would be a good experience for you I said are you really serious you know I only got about three hours to go get signatures and do this yeah yeah do it so I got into the convention, and I found out that I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, started looking at uh, actual service in office a as an option. As Three a way hours made a difference in a Three lifetime. Three hours, yeah. Well, I a mean few that's signatures. That's really I could have been close one to the wire. I could have been a couple signatures short. It was raining that day too, and I remember running up to the lieutenant governor's office in this building and. Do I have enough names? Y yeah, about two names, two names over, <laughs> you know, something like that. I said, fine, you know. Where did you get the desire to want to make a difference, or you said to make things better? Well, did, was I that think in the family, I or was that something that you well, acquired? Well, I think uh, I loved history. 
Mm. So I read everything I could possibly about history. And in, in, in terms of uh, Native Hawaiian history, I remember discovering, um, uh, you know, about the sixth grade, reading uh, a book. I, I wouldn't even recommend it today because it's such a slanted bit of history. But when there is no other history around, reading that book gave me an insight to the idea that there was this Hawaiian nation, things happened, blah, blah, blah. What book, what book was it in case I, people I don't, are curious? I don't, I don't even remember we the don't name. It was, uh, it was just a book in the library oh. at the, in the public school system that I had borrowed. And, you know, I, I started reading this and I can remember t started talking to my dad, you know, what happened, what this, and, and for example, uh, I'm distinctly remembering the part in the book where it talked about the lowering of the Hawaiian flag at Iolani Palace in 1898, and uh, how the Native Hawaiian people stood around with tears in their eyes. You know, and I was ter I was really affected by that. Mm. And I went to see my dad, talk to my dad. I said, Dad, you know, that, uh, he said, Well, you know, it, son, it didn't only happen at Iolani. It happened on all the islands as well. In fact, your grandfather was there. What, what did your father do? And then your grandfather? Well, my, my, my grandfather, my father, my grandfather was this huge, big Hawaiian guy. He, um, he was the superintendent for um, the county's roads and so forth. You so know he was in the government, was, county government. Yeah, he okay. was. So he actually, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, was part of the county government. But, and my dad was a, was a rancher. First of all, I mean, he'd tell anybody that, you know, I'm a rancher. And second, uh, he was used to work for the telephone company. So this is, you know, we were a basic Hawaiian family. I mean, this is not a really political thing, except for the fact Except you love when, when the flag went down? No, okay. yeah, yeah, no, no, well, that was the thing about the flag. So it a lot of people me. remember that about you. Yeah, well, I, I swore to myself if I ever had a chance to do something about it, and I, you know, without knowing what that might be, I would take it. And years later, as fortune would have it, um, I had that chance when we were commemorating the 100th uh, anniversary of the overthrow. And uh, and so it, it you know people it was and so as you know, what I did was I um, uh, around the state capitol only flew the uh, the Hawaiian flag for the days of the commemoration. Mm -hmm. It was extremely controversial back Created in quite a stir. Uh, yeah, I back in uh, 1998. <laughs> I'm still getting people <laughs> reacting to that, even till today. But I, I and I don't know whether that was the best political move because no other political uh, person uh, supported me on that, but except Neil Abercrombie, mm. believe it or not. Neil was the only And that's the surprise you were going to tell me all. about. Yeah, it was, because, you know, I expected some of the other Native Hawaiians to, to support at that point, and o it was only Neil. But, um, yep, and uh, I don't know if it was the best political move I ever made, but it definitely felt good. <laughs> now, in retrospect, <laughs> in and retrospect, I would do it again. That kind of twice. gets us up to the contemporary. In that, you mentioned Governor Abercrombie. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, hindsight about what happened in the primary, but going beyond that to the role commission, which he appointed you to, right, correct? right. Right. Uh, do you have anything? Do you want to say anything about the elections before we get into the role commission in the future? Oh no, I mean, uh, the, the the, I think the elections like? are uh, were, were were interesting, and one of the um, it was interesting. For example, that uh, they, there was um, there was a lot of ethnicity in this last election in terms of people talking about it and so forth, but more so than any other election. You uh, mean? I, I, mean? I I think no, not necessarily. But by that I meant, uh, for example, you had two people of Japanese ancestry on the oh, Republican oh, oh. ticket, on the Democratic ticket, and you had two people from the Hawaiian ancestry and on the Republican yeah. ticket. It turned out um, not to matter. It turned out not to matter. I mean, except for the discussion. Prior to that, was two Caucasians with shots and Abercrombie. Yeah, and yeah. shots and yeah. Abercrombie. Yeah. So. I think one of the good things about elections in Hawaii, if we can say this, is that we've sort of matured to the point where it's possible. Looking beyond. For, yeah, for us to put together uh, uh, candidates uh, and grouping w with uh, ethnicity, in a sense, being incidental. 
it's still important, but incidental. Mm. It's not it anymore. I you like know, that. before I used to go and say, okay, uh, I'm going to run for governor. My best c shot might be having a, oh, Filipino you, lieutenant you, governor. You describe the demographics, not and a person or a name. The demographic. yeah. But this election, you know, it started off looking like that could become a thing, and, and it really didn't. And maybe that's what happened before. Um, so we might be ready for a female governor. Well, we already had a female governor. Well, I mean, in a sense, another in a different ethnicity? Well, Asian? you know, someday, if they work really hard, we may have a Republican governor again. But <laughs> Thank you knows? for that. <laughs> you get paid well for this interview anyway. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I, I know who knows? <laughs> who knows? But anyway, so we come to today. We got the yes, role commission. The role commission. And, and you're that, the one by the way, of. is uh, bipartisan, nonpartisan. Get, get bipartisan, people up to actually. speed on what it is, what it's supposed well, to do. Well, what it is was that happen. it was passed. It's the, uh, it's the result of Act 195, which was passed by the, the legislature, really. It mm -hmm. was an initiative of a group called the Hawaiian Caucus in the legislature and it was signed into law by Governor Abercrombie and what it, it created a commission first of all that was to register Native Hawaiians who would be interested in forming a Native Hawaiian governing entity which is uh, a very important aspect of um, Hawaiian self-determination and I, you know I'm not going to go into how we became a state and how we became mm. part of the United States except to say this that under the law, the, the law that we find ourselves, the United States law, the only way that um, government can deal with a, a group uh, with respect to issues of self-determination or um, entitlement like Hawaiian homes, for example, and others, is by making sure that that group is uh, part uh, 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 that uh, by is by according that group some kind of political recognition. One of the fundamental points again, we started talking about the maturi mat maturation politics in Hawaii. Well, the same thing applies to uh, p uh, political uh, or, or the treatment of people in general. The one thing that um, the United States Constitution abhors. And by the way, Native Hawaiians culturally dislike is any kind of racial preference. We have to be very careful. Say that, that again. Ooh, Native uh, Hawaiians don't want. Oh, culturally, we don't believe in what racial pre in I any kind of. You know, preference. Governor, I, <coughs> you, you know, know, I did that. my dissertation on Hawaiians compared to Caucasians in business, and the Hawaiians, when I would ask if they were a Lee background, they'd say mm, sometimes they would be very quiet about. It. Didn't want to make that a preference that hey, I'm a Lee and you're not, or who so. Well, so the problem so. with us doing that, you know, obviously, is the next guy is probably a Lee too. <laughs> And then, <laughs> you know, so what do you do? I mean, yeah, you want to compare your strain with mine? I do that all the time. I'm six generations from the dude, you know. Well, you're only, you're seven. <laughs> you know. And but it's unending. Okay. It's unending. Yeah. But the point is that we, we need to get, we can't have a racial preference. Nevertheless, okay. we have Native Hawaiian programs. We have all of these things that are happening. So the way that we can ensure that this is not about race but about political status is to create a self-governing entity mm. and that is w and that by the way would then allow the state and the federal government and anybody else to be able to deal with uh the hawaiian uh, nation if you will y you're and that's the basis for uh, act 195. but r you're kind of suggesting rice Cayetano is somewhere in there that you can't make it race-based but at the same time the role commission you got to be hawaiian to get on the role commission what's of course. the requirement for of someone course. to get of on course. The and nobody said any of this was logical <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, really we Did are dealing we are dealing with <laughs> government you know and it's it's uh, one of the Thank great you ironies of our constitutional analysis and if you want to have fun with constitutional lawyers bring up this point that the only way first of all you start off with the premise that we can't have anything based on race so we need something based on political status and the minute we say that we have to demonstrate that uh, political status comes um, from something that pre-exists the existence of the United States. So when you go back far enough, ah. you 
it ends up being Native Hawaiians, the people who were here before the coming of Western uh, of, uh, of Westerners. It's not race-based at all. Oh, of it's course not. It's people tradition. who were here in 1770, prior to 1776. By the way, it's refreshing to hear in this building someone will say that don't be so logical. It's too logical. <laughs> you, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and you know, and I'm, I'm speaking as a lawyer and as, a, <coughs> uh, as somebody who's been in politics. But whatever it is, it's like making sausage, right? You don't really want to go into all of this stuff, but you, you really like the taste of the sausage. You have to okay. about tasting good. Put the sausage on the table. Put what the are sausage the options? What are well, the options? Well, see, this is what we, we, you know, I, I, we, 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 we just, uh, our job was to make sure that there would be people who would participate in the process. And how many did you sign up? How many you got? We, we got about 120,000 uh, people who have signed up. Now, that's really quite a number because, uh, you know, there are about 500,000 Hawaiians in the last century identified not only in Hawaii, about 260,000 in Hawaii, mm. about 240,000 on the mainland. These are people who have self-identified. So we have about a half a million uh, people in total that claim uh, Native Hawaiian ancestry. We signed up 120,000. Um, Hawaiians who are over 18 years old. Mm. You Which see, you that 500,000 number includes men, women, Everybody. and children. But the people who signed up on the Kanai Olubalu, as the name of our campaign, the role, are people who are over 18. So that should be enough to move ahead then? Well, that should be a lot because yeah. that's much the higher universe. than. That's much it's higher than the number of registered voters that put our so state leadership into office. Y that's, you know, a, that's, a, that's another TV show I got to interview. <laughs> that's another, the, the small yeah, amount of people way, who elect us. By the, by the way, the highest percentage in recent times was when I was running for office. That's just a little what, 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 What's the percentage? That you well, know? I, I don't remember, but it is the highest if you go yeah. back. We've continued, from statehood, we've continually gone down. No, we went uh, up in the 1986 and 90 elections. I so there was the Waihei administration that made there was the, well, there was we the, need you the there next was time the, around. There was the Waihei excitement. See, what you need is the Gene Ward excitement. That's, that's what brings out voters, and well, that's what probably brought people, get people excited. If, if I can get, because we almost run out of time, but I want people to know what are the options on okay, the table. What, what, what are, are the points going to do? I think, do I think what, what the, 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 the main thing expect. that I think that people. Well, first of all, one of the good things, uh, I'm going to talk about the positive things that can come out of this real quickly. First of all, it, it, it will, uh, I think, settle a lot of the, uh, the idea of creating a self-governance, will settle a lot, uh, an outstanding issue about self-determination that exists in the Native Hawaiian community. I think that what we can do by then is, first of all, we can end up protecting uh, programs that already and institutions mm. that already exist, which is the primary basis. I think that we can then uh, also um, uh, manage the resources. Native Hawaiians can manage their own resources like, it, uh, like what they should do. I mean, mm -hmm. why should we Hawaiian homes be run by anybody else? I think that they can then strive for um, even more than that, uh, how they interact as a society and what they can do to contribute to the bigger society. See, I think those things are all possible. The negative side of this may be that we keep proceeding without understanding each other. And among Hawaiians or Hawaiians uh, and non Hawaiians? Hawaiians, non Hawaiians, and among right. Hawaiians. Because the mystery is well, if there is a sovereign nation, what does it look like? How does it, in the, in the beer symbol, how does it affect my house in Hawaii or how does it affect my house in Papakolea or wherever? Well, I used to tell people, for me at least, you know. I don't, I don't want anybody's land, as a native Hawaiians, and I think most people feel this way, we don't want anybody else's land. If you owned it, you owned it. What we want is all the land that Neil Abercrombie has his, in his inventory. The crown land. <laughs> Of course, point of course, eight there's million acres million. out of four. There is a lot of There's for only everyone. four million to give it. To begin now, with. that doesn't dissuade, you know, this great country of ours. Um, allows people to hold viewpoints that are way out there. That doesn't dissuade mm. some of mm. some Hawaiians to believe that we are to the, the islands itself, not just native Hawaiians, but all the people who live here mm. ought to be part of their own country. And they are, uh, they are uh, taking that position and selling it, uh, you know, um, 
I don't believe that the majority of people, both Hawaiian and non-Hawaiian, accept that point of view. Mm. But this is a great country, and so people dream of great things. But immediately, we need to start uh, interacting with each other and see how a governing entity compa comprised of Native Hawaiians could actually make this a better society. That's why I'm interested in it. Governor, we, I must apologize. I may have gone too much on the reminiscent and the young boyhood of John Wahe in his Michigan time, because we've run out of time. And really? you, have, you have 40 seconds to do a wrap up of what you want people to hear <laughs> about what's coming down the line with the Native well, Hawaiian Well, first role of all, t thank you very much for, for, you know, for allowing me to be here today. I think that uh, we all need, we all have a uh, stake in what happens with Native Hawaiian issues in the state of Hawaii, really? not just the Rural Commission. And so I would invite everyone to, uh, s to become involved, to study up, and to know that when it's all said and done, the bottom line is we all have a stake in making this a better place for ourselves and for our children. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard it. Hawaii can be a better place, and there's a place for Hawaiian sovereignty, which is coming. We don't know the exact form, but you've heard some of the shape from the former governor and someone who looks to be one of the... You're not going to be the king in the future. No. <laughs> Cut that out of here. Thanks for viewing. I'm Representative Gene Ward interviewing Governor Waihei. Aloha. Aloha.